Hi, this is Steve Leone from Renewable Energy World, reporting from Intersolar North America 2011 in San Francisco. I have with me today as my guest, Ron Resch. He's the president and CEO of SIA. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Steve. So we're going to be talking about manufacturing in the U.S. today. Um, so Ron, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, developments uh, in terms of the pipeline in the U.S. How is manufacturing going to try to be uh, able to, to uh, profit off of, off of this growth? You know, it's interesting. I think when you look historically, the United States was the largest manufacturer of photovoltaics in the world just going back about 12 years ago, and we've lost that leadership to countries like Germany, Japan, and most recently, China. But in 2010, we've seen U.S. manufacturing of uh, cells, wafers, and modules actually increase fairly substantially. Uh, wafers increased by 80%, cells by a little over 30%, and, and module manufacturing increased by 20%. And when we look down the road with First Solar and GE and some of the uh, other announcements and factories that are under construction, we think that the U.S. is going to make a very strong play for reclaiming a major leadership role in manufacturing photovoltaics. Okay, well, how much of that is going to be because of the market that is going to be in the U.S.? It, that it, you manufacture where your market is, and the more we grow the market in the U.S., the more manufacturing will be attracted to the U.S. and in, in, in places outside of California. You know, we're seeing manufacturing come to Mississippi and South Carolina and Tennessee and, and Michigan and those places which are absolutely crucial for our economic recovery as a country. Okay, well, and, you know, there's a whole policy issue involved here. Uh, how does the policy play into manufacturing, and even more importantly, how does the uncertainty of the policy uh, play into drawing manufacturers? Well, it, it's a great question, and you know, in the Recovery Act, there was a tax credit for new manufacturing facilities, a 30% tax credit. That program supported over 50 new manufacturing facilities for the solar industry alone. Now, unfortunately, that expired, and so there is no federal support for new manufacturing. We're working with the administration, we're working with Congress to try to reinstate those incentives, just so manufacturers who are looking to scale up will choose the U.S. over China or other countries. Well, I mean, can a state play into this as well and kind of fill that void? They have, and they will continue to do so. States have really stepped up and said, we want the manufacturing, we want the jobs, we're, we're willing to make that investment. Arizona, Oregon, as I mentioned, South Carolina, Mississippi, Michigan, all of them mm -hmm. have stepped forward and said, we are going to attract the next state-of-the-art manufacturing to our, you know, our state. And we're continuing to see that. And in fact, tomorrow, SIA is hosting a webinar with 18 different state economic development authorities to try to educate them what is happening in the solar industry and what it will take to compete to attract new manufacturing to their state. So we think we're going to have a pretty sweet deal coming from a number of states in the near future. Great. I mean, California is, is where, where the demand is certainly going to be. Uh, is there any movement in terms of drawing industry to, to California specifically? Um, you know, California still is one of the top manufacturers of photovoltaics in the entire U.S. and will remain so for the foreseeable future. But the reality is, is as long as you're manufacturing in a place where you can put those modules on a rail line or, uh, uh, you know, on, on the back of a truck, you're going to be able to bring them to the marketplace. And in fact, we're seeing the market diversify more and more in the U.S. So in fact, the market between Boston and Washington, D.C., was larger in that region in 2010 than the market was in California itself. Mm -hmm. So increasingly you're seeing manufacturers move out of California in order to serve other markets yet still export into the US, uh, into California from other states. So I mean, is the is the future of of PV capacity in this country in any way tied to manufacturing in this country? Not at all. You know, right now there's a global surplus of, of modules and those modules are being attracted increasingly to the United States. And those are coming from Europe, they're coming from China, they're coming from Korea, from Japan, uh, and, and other places around the world. So we're going to have to work very hard to ensure that manufacturing continues to grow in the U.S. just to service our own market. Could manufacturing ever go to the point where it was, you know, a, a, a large exporter to, to other markets? 
Absolutely. In fact, in 2010, we were a major net exporter, exporting almost a billion dollars um, in, in, uh, in equipment and materials overseas compared to what we actually imported. So, you know, right now, solar is one of the bright spots in the economy, and we certainly expect to continue to do so. Uh, but it's important to point out that we're not just exporting, we're also importing, that we do have a global market, and that it's critical that we have free trade policies in place, both domestically and in other countries, in in order for us to be able to sell those products around the world. Okay, thank you very much, Ron. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Steve.